In this video, I'll show you how to add Samba PTZ IP cameras to a Hike Vision PoE MVR, and I hope this video will provide insights to other users on how to add any third party cameras to a Hike Vision MVR. The MVR we are testing is a Hike Vision 7608 NI I2 PoE version. It should be applicable to any Hike Vision MVR and the MVR sold by its OEM partners such as LTS. The video will contain four sections according to different camera models we have as well as how they are connected to the MVR. You can navigate to a specific part based on your needs. First, let's start with Samba Illuminati. And in this scenario, we are connecting the camera to another PoE switch and to the router. The MVR is connected to the same router. So once we log into the MVR, we navigate to its network parameters and check its current IP address, which is 192.168.183 and the gateway is 192.168.11. So in this case, we need to make sure the Illuminati camera is having exactly the same IP range as the MVR in order to be added. When we use the SADP tool to locate the camera, we can see it is in a different network range and we need to fix that by assigning a new IP to it so that it will be on the same subnet as the MVR. And don't forget to change the gateway to match the MVR as well. Let's click modify to take effect. Now let's go to the camera management section and just choose any channel that isn't yet occupied. We select it and click Modify. We're going to change the type from Plug and Play to Menu and enter the camera IP. The protocol is Hike Vision and the default port is 8000. Let's enter the camera's username and password and we left the chance for protocol as Auto. Then you can see the status of the channel shows online, which means the camera is connected. Sometimes it's going to take a while and you might have to refresh the page to check the status. Okay, next, in this scenario, we're connecting the Illuminati camera directly to the PoE ports on the back of the MVR. Before you proceed to connect the camera to the built-in PoE switch of the MVR, you have to make sure the MVR is able to provide sufficient power to the camera by checking the MVR specification. A PTZ camera requires that the maximum per port output of the MVR reaches 25 watts and is compliant with the 802.3AT protocol. For example, if the specification of the MVR says it can only support 802.3AF protocol and provides up to 15.4 watts per port, then you still have to power the camera separately. On the other hand, even if the MVR is compatible, if there are many cameras already plugged to the MVR, you also have to take a look over the budget of the MVR's PoE switch. If you have an 8-port MVR with 120 watts total budget, and there are already 6 bullet cameras and 1 PTZ camera connected to it, let's do the math. 6 bullet cameras could take up to 50 watts per camera, and 1 PTZ camera could take up to 30 watts per camera, now the total 7 cameras have already taken all budget of the MVR, so in this case, you cannot add another camera to be powered by the MVR. Okay, when we finally make sure the MVR is able to power the camera, firstly, don't just connect it strictly to the back of the MVR. Before you do that, we're going to log into the camera and set it to factory setting. When we check the SADP tool, it's in the inactive status. This is just to make sure later the Hike Vision MVR will automatically activate it and assign an IP to it. Let's first connect the MVR to the router, which isn't necessary if you don't wish to have everything online. Then let's connect the camera to the back of the MVR to channel 1, which is D1. The MVR will automatically activate the camera and assign an IP address and password to it. The password will be the same as the MVR's password. You could also go to System Maintenance and then go to System Service to enable the IP camera activation option. 
This will allow you to customize the password when the IP cameras are getting activated. Now let's get back to the camera management section. We can see the status of the camera shows detecting and it could take up to 2-3 to three minutes. We didn't configure anything, just plug the inactivated Illuminati camera to the back of the MVR. And now the camera is online and the status icon changes. We could also go to the live view page and we could see the camera. Let's test the PTZ function. You can configure the line cross and intrusion tracking from the MVR as well. Just go to menu and select VCA. Then choose line cross and intrusion detection which is the same as a way of set up through a browser or the guarding vision client. Now let's switch to other non-tracking Samba PTZ cameras. Again in the first scenario, we are connecting the camera to another PoE switch and to the router and the Hike Vision MVR is connected to the same router. Now let's use the Device Manager tool or VMS to identify the camera's current IP address and if necessary, change it to match the IP of the MVR. Again, we log into the MVR, navigate to its network parameters and check its current IP address, which is 192.168.183 and the gateway is 192.168.11. So in this case, we need to make sure the Samba PTC camera is having exactly the same IP range as the MVR in order to be added, which we know that they are on the same subnet right now. If they are not, it's your job to modify the camera IP first. Then let's go to camera management section to add the camera. Just choose any channel that isn't yet occupied, select it and click modify, we're going to change the type from plug and play to menu and enter the camera IP. Now some models will support adding the camera on the Hike Vision protocol. I can't promise this would work for every model so you could email Samba support for confirmation but it's worth trying. Protocol is Hike Vision and the default port is 8000. Let's enter the camera's username and password and we left the transfer protocol as auto. The status of the channel doesn't change immediately, so you might need to refresh the page. But if you go to the image page, you can see the camera has already been connected. Now, alternatively, if this doesn't work, you could switch to the OnWith protocol and enter the camera's OnWith port, which is 8899, and save the setting. Again, we could check and verify whether it's been connected. Please allow 1-2 to two minutes for the connection to fully establish. If you still see an issue with connection, then please log into the camera and check it on with port under Device Config Network. And make sure it matches what you've entered for the camera in the MVR. In our last section, we will introduce you how to connect other Samba cameras like our 601-405 series directly to the built-in switch located on the back of the MVR. A PTZ camera requires that the maximum per port output of the MVR reaches 25 watts and is compliant with the 802-38T protocol. For example, if the specification of the MVR says it can only support 802.38F protocol and provides up to 15.4 watts per port, then you still have to power the camera separately. On the other hand, even if the MVR is compatible, if there are many cameras already plugged to the MVR, you also have to take a look over the budget of the MVR's PoE switch. If you have an 8-port MVR with 120 watts total budget, and there are already six bullet cameras and one PTZ camera connected to it. 
let's do the math. Six bullet cameras could take up to 50 watts per camera, and one PTZ camera could take up to 30 watts per camera. Now the total seven cameras have already taken all budget of the MVR, so in this case, you cannot add another camera to be powered by the MVR. So once you make sure the high vision MVR is able to provide sufficient power to the camera, the first step is to verify the address of its built-in NIC. Note, Hikvision PoE MVR has a separate gateway for its PoE switch that is different from the MVR's current IP address. For Hikvision cameras, the MVR will automatically configure it so that's plug and play. For third-party cameras like Samba, you do have to pre-configure the camera in order to get connected. Let's first try to locate the built-in NIC for Hikvision PoE MVR which is usually by default as 192.168.254.1, unless it's been changed. You could also refer to other cameras connected to the MVR, and you could see they are all on this same network range. Next, let's modify the camera's IP address to match what we found for the built-in NIC of the MVR. Let's set it to 192.168.254.4 and make sure it's not conflicting with other cameras on the MVR. Don't forget to set the gateway as well. You can definitely also modify the IP of the camera via VMS under Device Config Network. Once we modify the camera IP, let's connect it to the PoE switch of the MVR. Then let's go to Camera Management and select any unoccupied channel, change Plug and Play to Menu, and input the camera's new IP that you just changed to. Let's use On With Protocol with port 8899 and set its correct username and password, then click OK. The camera should then be online, and you will be able to watch the live view through MVR as well.